Hi, and welcome to the second session in our introduction to psychopathology. And for this session, we'll look ahead at some of the evaluation skills that you'll need when it comes to critically thinking about different theories. So what do we mean by AO3 skills? Well, AO3 skills refer to the collection of skills that you must demonstrate to the examiner, where you consider things like strengths and limitations of theories, what implications theories may lead to for society and the economy, and as you can see on the screen, a couple of other things as well. So let's put your critical thinking skills to the test then. One of the conditions you'll study in psychopathology is OCD, and the biological explanation assumes that the condition is caused by physiology alone. So you can see on the screen that there are three questions to consider, and each of them probe your critical thinking skills. So first of all, if it is physiological, OCD, then how would they suggest treating it. Secondly, is it likely that OCD is only physiological? And finally, why are biological theories scientifically credible? So pause the video for five minutes while you work on developing an answer for these questions. Hopefully that was okay and you managed to produce some suggestions for each question. So if OCD is physiological, how would they suggest treating it, they being the biological approach? And of course, they would suggest some of the physiological methods of treating any condition. So for example, medication, surgery in some extreme cases. Is it likely that OCD is only physiological? Generally, it could be just physiological but it's also more likely to be partially biological. And if you know anything about the nature-nature debate, then this is a really good chance to have that discussion. And finally, why are biological theories scientifically credible? And again, you may discover this the more you delve into the biological approach, but they generally tend to use objective and replicable methods of investigation. So for example, different types of brain scans, different methods such as post-mortems, all of which are objective and remove any of that subjectivity. Now, one important AU3 skill, and this is right the way through your course, is to apply your knowledge to the real world. After all, if theories are not able to contribute to the improvement of life or society, then one would have to wonder what the purpose of them actually is in the first place. So in this task, let's have a think about the economy. Have a think about the use of medication or surgery as treatments for OCD and have a think about the positive impacts that this could eventually have on the economy. So pause for two minutes while you give this question some thought and jot some answers down. Hopefully you manage to think of at least one example, but here's two for you to take away. People can return to work quicker if time off has been taken due to the condition. So for somebody with OCD, and this is not for all cases, but there are cases where some people will need to take time off work. And of course, this can cost businesses money. This can impact things like the amount of pension money that's put aside, tax contribution. So if OCD is being treated with medication, for example, which is very available, then people will be able to return to work a bit quicker. Secondly, findings from surgeries could lead to the condition being predicted or even in some cases prevented. Now, one other crucial skill is for you to be able to use research as part of your evaluation. And you may use research to support psychopathology, or you may use it to challenge psychopathology, different theories like biological, cognitive and behavioural. So let's take 10 minutes now to find and summarise one of the key studies that you need to be familiar with. You may or may not have heard this study already, but it is quite an infamous one. So let's start your notes with the expression, which is a really good technique to get into for developing your AO3 skills. One study that supports the claims that all phobias are learned through conditioning is the Little Albert study. So pause the video for five to 10 minutes while you find the study have a read, get to grips with it, and then on your worksheet, write a brief summary, and then we'll check it together soon. Okay, let's take a look at the study together. I'm sure you can spot that there are some ethical issues for that particular study, but here's a general overview. And you can pause the screen if you want to take some further notes, but I'll give you a quick summary. So little Albert was a baby boy, Researched by Watson and Rayner in 1920 to see if a phobia could be learned through conditioning. And after being presented with various stimuli, including the white rats, the only one that caused little Albert any fear at all was a loud banging noise. 
So each time Little Albert was presented with right rats to play with, a loud bang was heard behind the back of his head. And after a while, Little Albert became afraid of the white rats. And we know this is significant because he wasn't afraid of the white rats before. And this was because he was associating the loud bang with the white rats. So there's a good study for you to use to support the idea that phobias might actually be learned. One final task for this session, for a quick introduction to depression, which is the other uh, and third compulsory disorder that you'll need to study in this topic. So read the first statements and decide if you think if they are true or false about depression. Pause for two minutes, have a quick think, have a quick chat if anyone's nearby. OK, let's take you through the answers. So first up, depression is a psychotic disorder and that is false. Depression is a mood disorder. If we're looking for an example of a psychotic disorder where somebody loses touch with reality, then our go to example there for your spec would be schizophrenia. Number two, depression is something anyone can experience. This is absolutely true. Three, antidepressants reduce depression by acting as a placebo. Now, whilst we know that antidepressants do physiologically impact the body, there are some claims that it can act as a placebo. And actually, people may start to begin to feel a little bit better because they've been to a medical professional, they've had that conversation. Depression has different triggers. Again, this is true. Number five, therapy cannot help someone with depression. And this is false. So there you go. There's a quick introduction to the three and some other disorders that you will have to study in psychopathology.